smoke weed do a lot of pills our event is pristinely organized Nick's going crazy I'm gonna go hand out flyers and pump this party out and promote as much as I can if all of these events go well it'll be a movie <laughs> Michael ready this thing has been to war and back good content good content outstanding I have to get a pop a sexy style you know what I mean so good welcome to Miami Bitch. This is it. It's gonna be a good night. I think it's gonna build. There's a good momentum. People are having fun. I love it. So we lost six thousand dollars last night. Fucking fix it. No, and you're not gonna talk to me like that. I want what I was promised. When you're in this business, friends have expiry dates, man. Hi. Like this is bad. We made nothing on this event. That club is the worst management I've ever seen in my life. Not cool, bro. Calm as a bitch. Basically, he can go fuck himself because I don't give a shit about him. We got robbed by the actual venue that we're doing four more events with. We can never prove it. I was depending on an investor. Your Back investor so did not have nothing come to through. do with it. We're here now. We canceled yesterday. Calm the fuck down. This is your responsibility. This is your shit. I'm 3,000 miles away from home. You say, I want this. Take, 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 take. You keep going and going and How going. How many people have I done with the shoe brought to me? Do we know where the rest of our team is right now? They saw the cops. The hotel has called the police? Yes. NotTellMyMom.com And what is up, everybody? My name is James D. Fury, and this is Blackballed. Um, welcome back. Last night, uh, I was trying something different. I showed the first half of the documentary film that I produced, wrote, and, air quotes, starred in. We run shit. Um, I thought it worked out pretty well, and tonight is part two. We're going to be joined tonight again by director and animator Scott Storm, as well as uh, what I dubbed, who I dubbed the director of Intangibles, E Class. I have a lot of people since this movie came out think or believe that director of Intangibles means drug dealer. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, Trust me, I didn't need any help finding any of those. Um, it was Winter Music Conference, and I was in Miami. So let's be honest. You don't need to find a drug dealer in Miami because everyone's a drug dealer in, my, in Miami. Um, but Director of Intangibles with E-Class, he, what that means is, is that, he, well, it's intangible. You almost can't describe it, but he's a positive force. He was literally the person that I relied on in order to lessen my stress, um, that's why when you see E Class Mad, um, it's it's a very it's a very um, it's a juxtaposition. E Class Angry, it doesn't make any sense. Um, so, what I would like to do first is um, is tell you about what it was like to do the festival circuit. So we we did the Phoenix Film Festival, and we won best documentary there. Um, there are amazing and and there's a whole bunch of reasons why we won. Um, you know, we were kind of like the misfits of the of the entire festival. There were, um, I think, forty documentaries or something like that that were holy crap! I'm sweaty. Um, there were like forty documentaries that we beat out. 
Scott Storm, the di uh, the director and the animator, had been to the festival with a bunch of movies that he's done in the past many times before. I think this is the first time he won. I could be wrong about that. He will correct me adamantly when he joins us. E class and and Scott are are, are going to join us in, within the next fifteen minutes or so. Um, but then we went to something called the Golden Door Film Festival. The Golden Door Film Festival is a really interesting kind of uh, place that we found ourselves. It was started by Bill Servino, uh, which is the, who is the nephew of Paul Servino. And Paul Servino, as we know, is Uncle Paulie from Goodfellas. I also met um, Furio from Sopranos there. We hung out for a bit. It was dope. I'll try to find a picture because I, ha I have a picture of him somewhere, uh, of me and him. And um, But the cool thing, I'm going to lead off tonight um, by talking a little bit about the Golden Door Film Festival before I, I start, I get into the movie. And the reason why is because as an Italian guy, um, mafia movies um, were everything to, to me growing up. Um, rest in peace, Ray Liotta. That really sucked. Um, but the thing is, is that um, I, I was so, I walked into the Golden Door Film Festival opening gala and I'm looking around and I'm like, Fuck, holy shit, that's Paul Servino. Holy shit, that's that's Furio. I, I forget his name now, <laughs> his, his actor name. I don't know. That's probably really bad. And there were a couple other guys, um, you know, lesser known mafia characters that you see. But Paul Servino was interesting because we ended up going to dinner. And um, it was our crew and the uh, people that ran the, the film festival, Bill Servino and, and Paul Servino. And this is when I used to drink a lot of red wine. And Paul Servino and I were toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We each drank like two bottles of red wine. And, and then we went to like the bar side of this restaurant. And one of the most magical moments in my life happened at, at, at that point. And um, I think it was his nephew that suggested that he, that he do this, but it, it was, it was like I was in a dream. Um, there's uncle Paulie from Goodfellas standing literally right in front of me. I took a knee and I got my phone and I'm just like pointing it at this. Bro. The song is O Sole Mio. And the little girl was my Aunt Louisa. I'm going to now sing that song. Che bella casa, una giornata di sole, una riassa di Europa, una tempesta, l'aria fresca, pare già una festa. Che bella cosa, la giornata di sole. Vado sole, che ho bella idea. Che sole mia, stan fronte a te. Che sole, che sole. singing O Solo Mio. Really? Like, it was fucking amazing. Um, and, you know, like, it's, it's, it was just like a dream. Like, the whole trip was, was basically a dream. And, um, you know, here we are. Where are we here? I'm sorry, I'm trying to find uh, the, the, the pictures to prove how cool I am. <laughs> I'm not that cool. 
Um, this is us just like hanging out at dinner. Um, this is not Paul Sabino. This is just like the We Run Shit crew. Um, and what else do we got here? Oh, there's my... Uh, <laughs> this is... Oh, it's not loaded yet. Sorry. Um, so if you guys watch Sopranos, like, like I know Ryan... I can see Ryan Lindley there in the chat. Uh, Sopranos are like, it's, it's one of those creative enterprises that, that actually like, I don't know. Um, made me feel like I was more Italian, you know, like I, I would, I would binge watch the Sopranos with like some penne, some arrabbiata and some fucking Chianti. And I would, by the time I was like, I would blast through a season in like, I don't know, two days or whatever, three days. And I, you know, I was a bachelor and I would just be fucking sloppy drunk. People would call and I'd just be like, yeah, hello. Yeah. Who the fuck is this? And it would be like my mom. I'm like, what the fuck do you want, mom? You know, like, cause I was just so into the shit. And then, so, um, I think it was the next day we're at this, we're at the gala and I just fucking meet Furio. I, and I'm just like, come on. So this film, I, and I'm, I'm going to circle back and I'm going to start the film in a second. But this film, for me, it, like the whole thing started off as a failure. It really did. If you watch part one last night, you know exactly what I mean. We, we, we tried to throw events, <clears throat> five events, with literally no money except for our videographers, 10 grand that he ponied up at the last second and it was gone in like five minutes, that 10 grand. And so to be able to like, to spend a week in Miami failing at every fucking turn, because spoiler alert, you're going to watch part two tonight. It doesn't get better. It, 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 it won't get better. It'll, it'll get a little worse. Um, but, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn here. This is more like a lesson. I think that, that I learned you know, without really trying to learn it, I just, in hindsight, I sort of was like, oh, you know what I think I did there? I think I made lemonade out of lemons. Because I, I you know, we, we failed at what we were there to do. And in the middle of it, I was like, this is now a documentary. So I, I pulled Michael aside, our videographer, and I'm like, you're no longer shooting anything except documentary footage. And I would send him there and I would send him there. He'd go and get B-roll footage. He'd come back. I'd be like, go over there, go over there. And... And then, you know, it, it was able, I, you know, like three years later, I'm doing this because of that failure. So I think what I'm really saying is that if you're a failure like me, <laughs> or if you've been a failure like me, there is always a way to just tweak that failure a little bit and find a little morsel of success. So on that note, I'm going to play... Um, I'm gonna start it from here. So, so this is the this is right at the part where we found people fornicating in the manager's vehicle. I'm literally quoting the the guy, um, and and we were about to pick up Black Eyed Peas from the airport. So I'm giving you guys uh, like six minutes or whatever from uh, an overlap from last night. When I get back, uh, E Class will probably be here by then, and Scott Storm will probably be here by then as well. In fact, I'll probably just wait for them to come before I come back. So, anyways. Without further to do, this is part two of We Run Shit. At the end of the event, we looked at the cash. I mean, we were short. I don't even remember, but it was thousands of dollars short. I think there was a few hundred bucks in the till. So Nick and I then had to sit down with the management companies and we were just honest with them and told them, you know, we don't have the money right now. That it was the longest 10 minute meeting I've ever been involved with. And they looked at us and they were like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you joking? And we're like, nope. There's nothing you can do at that point except just say, no, I don't have the money. And then hope that they're not a little bit more hard edged than, than you are. Oh, 
people and women are key. So you're going to Hello Miami. 5 a.m. in Miami. 5 a.m. business. What's up? What's up? Hello Miami. Now with Danny and Lewis from Grassroots, they were calling, they were emailing, and for 72 hours, we just put the brakes on all communication. I don't regret doing that actually, because they wanted to know every little detail, but yet they didn't have anything to give us. And as a partner, they weren't really holding up anything on their end. They were acting like they were our bosses because they put down some money for the venue on the Friday. So they felt that they had ammo to tell us what to do. Three days, that's 72 hours, where we just didn't answer any of their emails or any of their phone calls because the only thing that we could say to them that was relevant to our situation is we have no money. And as soon as you say that, then they would have just pulled the plug on everything. His lack of consideration for human beings is not cool, bro. Calm is a bitch. It's not how I do business. Love is love. <coughs> He's not the way. Excuse me. <coughs> this is really good weed, man. But when you want to be the man and you're in this business, friends have expiry dates, man. Yeah, that's that's. You know what I mean? They come with a little tag that says, "Once you do this to me." I am no good anymore. Still continuously going on. He won't think before he speaks. He'll promise the world and then deliver the island. You know? But I will be friends with him for the rest of my life. Oh my goodness. But still, the reality is those days are done. Now we're moving into the last days of the week. This is crunch time. I know it's a lot for you, but it's a lot for everyone. Yo, send Alize. Just send her, dude. She's there, she's got a truck. You don't have to come here and get the rental car and do all that. Send the hot girl to go pick up Jay Mello. That's it, it's so simple. We have so much to do today, and we have to be at the venue in five hours. I have no MCs. I have a product that won't download and no MCs to spit. Five hours before our event starts. I want to have a sit down and I want to make sure everybody's here because... What, what was that? It was horrible, but I didn't have a room again last night. Where did you go? I walked around and I handed out more flyers, but you know what I found? I found a huge stack of our flyers inside of the garbage last night. Really? Yeah. I found, no lie, about a thousand flyers in the garbage wrapped up in rubber bands. He's dumping the flyers. I know he is. They're in garbage cans all across South Beach right now. What flyer was it? I was given out the purple one and... I've been working, bro. Working. These guys want a list of what I've done. You know what I do? Um, I, I just want to I just want to reiterate something. Um, if you ever and Ryan Lindsay Lindley, you can you can attest to this. You know somebody's lying by the way they answer certain questions. So, Eric, and, and also oftentimes people think they're clever by basically confessing something that they did by pretending that someone else did it. You may have just noticed that he called, Ariel calls and is like, yeah, I just, I just found all these, I couldn't believe it, all these flyers in garbage cans. And E-Class says, what flyers were they? And Ariel says, I was giving out such and such, and such a flyer in this flyer. <laughs> Let's review that for a moment. Really? You found flyers in the garbage can? Which flyers did you find in the garbage can? I was giving out these two types of flyers. Hmm. I think you just gave yourself away as a fucking idiot, Ariel. Anyways, I don't know if you guys noticed. I don't like that guy. I don't like him at all. Do I talk to people? I'm a promoter. You don't need a fucking list of who I talk to. I'm tired and just pissed off. I'm sick of hearing, I gotta do this. I gotta do this. You don't gotta do shit, but get me a fucking room. You know what, dude? I've never ever in my life had to deal with something so goddamn childish in my, like, this is bullshit. Business and pleasure, that's There's what no pleasure. I do. This is what I do. There's no fucking pleasure, dude. Hey, class. <laughs> it just said that my download would take 43 days to download. <laughs> it did. I'm, I've never experienced that ever ever since. I'm trying to download the Eat the Beat video for the for the freestyle thing, and it, it did say it. Uh, your download will take 43 days <laughs> to download. Like, that's not even a kilobyte. A second, I don't know. Anyways, 
I'm laughing now. It was really frustrating at the time, everybody, just to let you know. But it literally said that. I'm trying to get the fucking party going, bro. That's all. That's all I want is a good fucking party. I want to see a lot of happy people. I want to see a lot of drunk people. I mean, really, what the fuck else is going to happen? <laughs> well, let's find out. Hey, things are going pretty good as far as logistics for tonight. Okay, now that you have the video, do we need to figure out how to put onto a DVD? Well, hold on. It's downloading now. I don't know if it's going to play. I've already downloaded one, and it didn't play it. Only because I'm technologically retarded. I'm going to prepare for the worst right now, so... What are the time slots for tonight? I don't know. I'm trying to find MCs. Can you do that? So I slept about an hour and a half, and we weren't able to pay the DJs last night. We only were able to give them, like, a little bit. 8 a.m. knocks on the door. I had people from the different management agencies. Need to speak to you outside. I mean, uh, got threatened. Had people say they're going to sue my creative group. Then was notified Paris and Nikki Hilton are so unbelievably upset that they are going to sue Two Mundos for not approving this flyer. That they were pictured like drag queens. Kind of looks like Eminem in drag, doesn't it? I can't believe they're not happy. <laughs> it's just been a little nonstop. You know, them DJ Ben K, the DJ from Japan, was kicked out of his room. Jay Mello's connection was an hour and a half delayed. Alize is just now getting back on the highway with Jay Mello. And other than that, I think we're doing okay. That is about all the money that our investor has left. You want to keep going and then I'm just going to say get the fuck out of here? Fucking fix it. No, and you're not going to talk to me like that. I want what I was promised. Three large pizzas, please. David <laughs> <laughs> brought in all those people yesterday and didn't even get to play. We can't fire him because he's connected to the DJ that's bringing in a whole shitload of people, so... It's almost par for the course. At least one DJ doesn't get to play. It's been two fucking days. You have the shrimp and barbecue. I don't want anything to do with you if you're going to disrespect me. And disrespect? Bro, you left me out on the fucking street for two nights. I didn't leave you on the fucking street. I told at you. At 12.22 a.m. last night, you looked at my text message. I said, Nick, what room am I in? Let him work on it so he can give you an answer. I understand days. that, but you're going into arguing and going back and forth when that time can be spent on him finding a solution. I gotta sleep, bro. I'm, I have to sleep. I'm asking you to make a list of what you've accomplished. You haven't been able to do that for a week. Like, do you understand? There's gotta be... Okay, so... I would like to now introduce... Um, reintroduce Scott Storm, uh, who is the director and the animator of We Run Shit. Scott, welcome back Hello. to part two of the Valium tour of <laughs> Miami. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Um, and I am very excited that my man E-Class is here. E-Class, what up, son? E, what up, fellas? How you doing, bud? It's been a while. Going. It's been too long. How you doing, man? You doing well. Like, you, dude, you look like you're like the grandfather version of you that was in this movie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got a big hanging Methuselah beard and shit. How you like doing, man? Traveling in time. Yeah. Um, when's the last time you watched this movie? Woo! Uh, <laughs> a very long time ago. Yeah. Uh, probably around when, uh, when we won the award. Probably around then. Okay. Listen, I've been describing you um, last <laughs> night and tonight as like this like and maybe you get tired of this shit, but like uh, sort of like the beacon of positivity. You know? Like but now you look like this studious professorial kind of E-class. How you doing, man? I <laughs> look, my brother, a young man coming from the Bronx to be even aligned with that word of positivity is a fucking honor so i appreciate it i i received it <clears throat> and i'm, I'm super uh, grateful man i'm super grateful what we accomplished so many years ago on a, on a whim and here we are talking about it you know so i know yeah. i know well look i'm really happy that you guys are both here i'm gonna let the movie play for about five minutes and then come back um just enjoy it and then and and we're gonna we're gonna have a few chats about why nick is in here <laughs> okay all right guys a back and forth. It's not, I want this. Take, 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 take. So is, this is this registered? Is this registered? Don't talk to me like I'm a fucking idiot, Juan, okay. bro. I'm not no fucking idiot. Okay, well, if you're not a fucking idiot. Don't talk to me like I'm some fucking idiot, bro. Don't, don't talk, talk, to, talk me. to me. Give me my fucking room or give me a I'm pretty sure he's okay. an idiot, everyone. Just to let you know. 
war of words. God damn it. See what you guys make us do. Okay, well my phone's about to die. I have no phone charger because Ariel fucking walked off of it. Okay, I'm gonna start getting ready. Hey, I'm lost. Good chain, man. Um, I don't know where I'm going. Does he not want to do the sound check? Okay, man. Well, I'll see you there. I think it's gonna be a good night. People have been calling all day and all night for the events. Our cashier is handling the money. Give me a fucking break, dude. Someone will come over from the club and take the money. That will happen. He's Watch gonna kick us up. Dude, Haim is not a rational person. Last time I told him no, he's like, well then don't bother coming here. We're not gonna make any money tonight now because of that decision. Unacceptable. Okay. We're gonna go to the venue and we're gonna be like, where does our cashier who handles the money sit? Your girl can do the fucking list. The security guard gave me some sound advice. One of them took me aside and said, you don't want to deal with this guy in an aggressive way. Um, he said over the past five years or four years, two promoters that have had differences with him on the strip in Miami, all of a sudden were never heard from again in Miami. No one knows what happened to them. And he's like, that could be you next. So just watch yourself. And uh, of course I didn't. I'm kicking out James on film. I walked into the venue. Haim comes up to me, starts poking me in the chest, and telling me that it's his girl that's going to work the door, which in this business means that you're about to get robbed. And he's like, my club, my rules. He's like, I don't give a fuck about you. I don't give a fuck about Nico. I don't give a fuck about your partners. And I'm like, OK, I'll relay the message. And I walked away. And he starts screaming and yelling inside the club, telling me to come back here. I just kept walking. You know, when he came outside, he said, I'm banned from my own event, so. The funny thing is, Haim didn't kick me out because I'm an arrogant prick. Haim kicked me out because I told him that I couldn't have his girl at the door because he had only a minority share in the proceeds. The fucking guy thought I called him a minority. Jesus, man, in Florida, since when are old Jews a minority? I just want to point something out. Um, I don't know if you guys, uh, <laughs> if E-Class and Scott, if you guys agree. I'm pretty sure Alizé fucked Jay Mello. I'm, I'm just saying. I wouldn't she, know. <laughs> she, she took a while. I'm just, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. Like, she literally disappeared for an hour when he was like a 15-minute drive away. It was a big mystery. I don't know how it happened. E-Class. Can you hear me, buddy? E-Class is having trouble with the sound. I don't know why that is. Um, E, can you hear me? Okay, I guess he can't. Um, but anyways, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm pretty sure Nick's girlfriend fucked Jay Mello. But I'm just saying. Shall we continue? Interesting aside. I want to know how to fix E-Class's sound issues, and I don't know how to do it. Can you hear me, E? No, he well, can't. He, he left. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll figure it out.
do you guys remember how big LMFAO were back then? They were pretty popular. I wasn't a fan, so I don't know much about them. Yeah, I still can't hear you, buddy. I don't know what's going on with your thing, but um, you were fine at the beginning. I know, do you have headphones, buddy? Can you, if you can hear me, put on some headphones. Here I go. Here I go. There you go. There you go. LMFAO were massive at this point in time, and I don't think they deserved it. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> I don't. I mean, they were very good, these kids, so. Yeah, sure enough. Um, we're we're going to let it go for another five minutes, and then I want to come back and talk about some stuff um, about E-Class, what you're doing now, um, why you seem so serious, and who the hottie was that was standing right beside you before... Before, before I put it back on the camera. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we gotta have everything kind of work very smoothly, especially like Paris and Nikki show up and Akon and all these people that have RSVP'd. We need to make sure that things are, are organized. Gotta get that money. I've got eight text messages. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. I guess it's saying that there's a, people just getting off private jets and they're going to be all coming. So exhausted. That's going to be a good event. I don't think I'm going. This uh, gifting suite with all the celebs here from four to eight today. Two Mundos magazine that partnered up with this put this flyer out. Paris got this on her BlackBerry, saw it, and was like, "What the hell is that? They are not going to be at this event." I just want to point out that I never got any money for the song that's playing in the background right now, even though it's me rhyming. I just want to point that out because none of us got any money for anything related to this film. So I had to convince Paris and Nikki to still come to the rooftop here and then also come to the Will I Am Fergie thing at Dolce, which it looks like it's gonna happen. Take a seat, I got to tell you something. It's driving me crazy, but please don't get mad, baby. It's something from my past and I didn't think it would last, but now I can't move on like boats with them busted masts. It's the reason behind my temper and jealousy. I failed to see the symptoms of my own reality, but I felt it creep up when you got mad at me. I got confirmation on who I am, Daedalus, and all those people. It's been 20 long years since I started getting drunk, man. LSD, ecstasy, some shrooms, and some blunts, man. <laughs> me and my boy brought shit off that dude. He's a punk, man. I didn't say I play fair, I just said I play. <laughs> There's been a lot of talk about the fusion of genres lately. Electronic music, I mean, that's so accommodating to different styles. And I was wondering, you know, if it's something that you're going to continue. We do a lot of this mixing of different genres because eventually they all start to rub off on each other, influence each other, meld and create something new. And I feel like that's kind of what we're kind of in the forefront of trying to do. I thought it was weird the first time I mixed it, acoustic guitar with beatboxing and everything. But then when you have an open mind, it's like, it's just music. You know, all music is music. This is business. Like, what we do, we just do our part. Our part is, is to be an artist. Everything's just changing, you know, and it's just all about, you know, being open and, and going with it. At the end of the day, like, if people get touched by the music, that's all that matters, you know. If you can speak from the heart and touch people, then they'll respond. This wasn't planned, by the way. This whole thing with Mattis Yahoo. <laughs> the scoundrel who's laughing off me, but... 
Okay. Um, I want to talk about Nick for a second, and, and not and I don't want to disparage him or anything like that. But he didn't want to come on because he was like embarrassed or whatever for for all the shit that happened. E class, let me ask you: Don't you think that this was the, like a learning moment, and the fact that we were able to make a fucking movie that won awards out out of that disaster of a week isn't that the success? Like, like for real? Like, can you talk about that for a minute? Because I I, I feel like. I feel like I'm the, I, I don't know. I, am I out to lunch? I, 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 I like the fact that we took lemons and made lemonade. That, that's all I'm saying. Oh, you're <laughs> fucking kidding me. Your goddamn <laughs> mic ain't working again. Oh, <laughs> that's exactly. That's it. That's that's it. it. Forgive me. I'm an old head, so. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's exactly what we did. You know, we made the best of it. We made the, the best of the bullshit that we were, you know, dealt with. There were so many situations that presented themselves that were like red flags, and we just kept running over them, you know? <laughs> I mean, for me, yeah, the fact that, again, the, we're here talking about it now, yeah. Uh, I, you I, missed I, it yesterday. Missed yesterday. But, but part, but one, part one, when I showed, when I showed the, the ground, transportation the ground that transportation that you guys had to use to pick up the Black Eyed Peas management, management. <laughs> Nick asked me to go, and I'm like, I think you should ask E class to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I was with the bullshit. I was with whatever, whatever we needed to do. Let's go. Let's get it done. But yeah, I mean, you 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 saw the bullshit we went through, and that's only the stuff we actually captured. So you can only imagine. Oh God! Oh God! It was it was fun. It was. I mean, for me, it's uh, it's a learning experience. I don't look at failures. I look at experience, and you know, it's up to us to take what we want from them. And for me, this that experience was priceless. You know, a lot of those people that we dealt with that night, I still like. I I still see polos, bitch ass. Which <laughs> that was a great experience. There, yeah. Well, I, I might as well tell this quick story. So we're at the end. So we had um, Cadillac sponsor. And at the end of the night, when uh, Will I Am and everyone was, you know, heading home from the from the event, Polo, which happens to be his manager, it was a while ago that I think he got, well, he got punched in the face. I don't know if it was Perez or somebody. He punched Perez, Perez Hilton Perez in the face in, in the Toronto. face in Toronto. That's what it was. All right. So this, yeah. this cornball. So he's there. Um, I'm with Nico and then the, the Cadillac sponsor lady. She was like, oh, do you think we can get a picture with what I am? And I was like, of course. So she goes over there and he's, you know, she's like, hey, can we, uh, you know, get a pic? And then Polo jumps in in front of what I am and is like, uh, no, she, you cannot get a picture. Uh, walk away, please. Blah, blah. Was it was it was a douche. And then this is how karma works. Not even five minutes later, um, me and Nico talking, Polo comes up to us and he's like, yeah, uh, can we get another vehicle? We have, you know, more people than we expected. And, it was, and I told him, I jumped in front of it and it was like, actually, you know, the lady that you just told to get away, she's the one that could facilitate that. So you should go talk to her. <laughs> yeah. And what do you think? The next picture we saw was him. Sitting bitch on top of somebody in the car, like instead of him going to fucking you know check his ego or anything, yeah, was what it was. But there was quite a number of situations like that where it was refreshing to you know to deal with these people in certain aspects. Have you told them about the limo piss story yet? <laughs> oh no, no, oh, I, <laughs> yes, forgot I forgot the, about the limo. Yeah, okay, we can't okay, talk can't while E class is talking because your speakers are causing an echo. So just so just you talk. <laughs> Yeah, you might yeah, have to fix the setting when you do that, but hopefully. Do that, but hopefully. But yeah. But yeah. Walk each the, the, walk each the, the, No, it's not working. <laughs> just tell the story just and I'll shut up. Just tell the story and I'll shut up. <laughs> no, no, no. That was it. I, want, I told 
<laughs> so okay, I'll tell the now. story. Okay, and, uh, <laughs> and she's known. She's she's known for. Uh, she she was at the time. Fergie, uh, like there was that picture going around. There was like three pictures of her on stage where she had pissed herself. It happened in like 2008 and 2009. And when she was, <laughs> when, we, when we sent the limo to her, she had to pee, I guess. And so she stuck, Fergie stuck her ass out of our limo and I guess just left a trail of pee from like the Delano to Dolce or whatever, <laughs> somewhere around there. Um, we got charged. Did I get that right? Yeah, we ended up getting charged for the cleaning service. <laughs> Wait a second. She she pissed inside the actual fucking inside the limo? Oh yeah, that's how we found out. I th I thought she pissed while the limo was driving and stuck her ass out of the limo door. Hey, who's to say it wasn't a combination? <laughs> I know it was actual factual. Oh my god. Fuck, why didn't we get that on film? Good job, Michael. Okay, let's go back to the film for a sec. <laughs> Copy that. The settings we will. Okay, so we've got some bad news. Tumudas really fucked up on the Paris and Nikki thing with the flyer. Paris said fuck this and she left Miami right away. And so therefore, of course, she's not gonna come tonight. Nikki Hilton is literally sitting with Fergie. She's about to go on with the Black Eyed Peas, like now. At Ultra. At Ultra. And Nikki's like, oh, I can't wait to go see you at your birthday party at Dolce. And Fergie had no fucking clue what she was talking about. Fergie said, I have no intention of going to Dolce. She's the biggest draw for this event that we're doing tonight. All the money that's coming in tonight is based on her going there. Let's be honest. It's like probably 70% of the crowd will come because of that. We never saw an actual contract between Grassroots and Fergie. Um, I just called Lewis and I'm like, Lewis, what the fuck? Lewis and Danny <laughs> counted their chickens before they hatched, tried all this time to get Fergie to come to Dolce without having it solidified ever, couldn't do it. Then all of a sudden did a backflip on the whole Fergie subplot of the event because it was really a Will I Am event to begin with. Everything's really fucked up. Dude, this is so bad. I don't even know what to say. It's bullshit. I tell them it's bullshit. All you fucking egotistical bastards, you don't even understand that we don't want the fucking ones that make it happen for you. Keep clapping. But the ironic Keep part clapping. is, is that they've been telling us that we've been fucking around, and it turns out that they never confirmed anything. They're in violation, dude. Lewis, I don't care. It doesn't matter how it happened. We've got a huge event tonight. I need the main chauffeur's number so I can send it to Lewis. Are we now paying for a limo for an artist that isn't coming to our event? This is the driver. This is Why the isn't anyone calling thinking of our bottom line? Why isn't anyone Real thinking five. about that? He's like, get to the venue. And I'm like, dude, I'm finishing up this event up here and I have to jump in the shower and then I'll come to the venue. I can't control these celebrities. They were invited. I did deal directly with their publicist and they said yes. But for Nathan and Alan to pull all of our rooms, where the fuck are people gonna sleep tonight? Like they're willing to put people on the street? That's not gonna be good for their fucking hotel reputation. So there's only one more night. I'll double people up and put like, you know, three people in each room. All of our rooms and the penthouse has to be completely evacuated by two o'clock. What? You didn't know about this? What are you talking about? You're fucking kidding. Nope. Welcome to my life. Why did this happen? Because the owner of the hotel said that no celebrity showed up. They just didn't show up. So we have no control over that. This is now officially a farce. This entire thing is a farce. Who else is in the vehicle? Is Polo with you? Okay, what about Will? Will I am. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot, Ryan. I appreciate it, man. Okay. Okay, bye. We have Fergie. We have Fergie in the limo. We have control of her right now. <laughs> we just picked her up at Ultra. We're taking her to Fontainebleau to change. We're gonna wait outside, and then we're gonna bring her to Dolce. There's Lewis. Hey, what's up? I just talked to Lewis. I'm like, yeah, we have Fergie. He's like, I don't give a fuck about Fergie. He's like, you're my partner for the event. I need you and all your people here because there's all kinds of people showing up. They run shit. The models aren't there yet. Now, basically, we're behind schedule. All they care about is press and celebs here. I've seen the good, I've seen the bad, I've seen the really bad. I just gotta make do with what I got. Sometimes things don't go well. This Winter Music Conference thing really, truly did not go well. But we just gotta keep going forward. And tonight's gonna be a great event. But now we gotta put things in place to make sure it's a great event. And that's all we can do right now. Okay. 
he's so defeated there. <laughs> like the writing was on the wall. You know, we we were the whole thing was a disaster, culminating to the point where this was the disaster moment. Um, what? I guess I'm asking E class. What could we have salvaged? Oh, not a yeah, nothing. Uh, like the, 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 I, I, I had such a, a a knot in the pit of my stomach because I'm like sitting there in Miami. I I don't have I don't have money to eat. I had like a dollar, <laughs> literally on me, because Nick was like, like you know, when we were still living in LA, it was it was I'm and, and I've been down this road with him before. I've been down this road with myself before. Like it's not like like it was all Nick's fault or whatever. But like you know, it it was like one of those things where. I'm, I'm all I'm doing is sitting there going, I don't I don't know how I'm going to get home. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I still don't know how I raise the money to get home. Scott, maybe you can um, thank Michael, because I think maybe he let me money <laughs> to, to take a plane home. Um, but anyways, he does uh, have good qualities. Yeah, he does. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to let it play a little bit more because now it's going to now we're getting into like the volume times 10 stage. So this is um, yeah, we'll, we'll, you'll see. Wait, do it again, do it again. Danny and Lewis don't want us to help them with anything. I got here and he was like, honestly, from you guys, like, we don't want anything at all. And we don't want to do business with you ever again. And I was like, okay. At that point, I just walked away. I didn't try to sell, you know, our services to them because they've already expressed the fact that they don't want to work together. It's all good. I love Amen. it. Welcome to Miami, bitch. So why are you standing in this line right now? I'm waiting. Will I am, Fergie? What's not to wait for? Why does ecstasy and electronic music go so well together? I can't tell you that, man. Well, the music is the music. Make you go crazy regardless. Why are you standing in this line, man? I want to get into this party. My friend's throwing the party. Oh, who's your friend from Los Angeles? Lewis from Grassroots? What's your name? I'm nobody. Nobody? nobody. Sweet. How you doing, nobody? Excellent. Okay. Wicked WMC. <laughs> All right. I just want to point out that Lewis's last name is Kuntzler. He literally has the word <laughs> cunt in his last name. I just think that it's, you know, I, I just think it's important detail because how many, you know, how many times do you have a name where it just matches your personality to, to a T. Like, you know, it happens. Fergie's birthday party, WMC is going down. Just in case you didn't get the quote, Miami is normal and it's beautiful and everything is beautiful. Don't do drugs, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Diplo got busy P. What up, son? 
They won't let me in the locker room. David Guetta. David Guetta. The world is mine. Bob Sinclair. So, what up? How you doing? Did you see that chicken inside the dance floor? Are you going to say anything? By the way, in those DJs, was that Steve Aoki, David Guetta? Diplo and David Guetta. Yeah. It would cost, what, 300 grand to book all of them? If you wanted You're to crazy. back in the day, Not even. back in the day, Millions. David Guetta was getting like 150. He was Tiesto level at that time. Yeah. Okay. For like, it now. Yeah. Well, nonetheless, he looked like a homeless person, as I said yesterday. Like he, I didn't know we weren't going to let him in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but we were like, uh, sorry, who are you? And Steve Aoki was like, oh, no, no, that's David Guetta. And I'm like, oh, what happened to him? <laughs> he looks all fucked up. But anyway. Hello. But she did piss in the limo. <laughs> Just pointing at it. So now we have been told we need to get out of the hotel within 20 minutes. Otherwise, we will be charged with trespassing. Do we know how much money was charged to us that shouldn't have been charged? $1,065.77. $4,000. $1,999.77. Do we know where the rest of our team is right now? Uh, they're packing. And everyone knows that we need to totally be out of here in 20 minutes? They saw the cops. The hotel has called the police. Has anyone spoken to any class? I just tried calling him. He's not answering. Thank you for calling you guys. I you feel so for sexy. The team this morning, man. OK, off to the next destination. Let them know what's going on right now. What's that saying? If you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. I plead the fifth. I don't. This is fucked right up, man. Yo, fuck Miami Dade. So what we got, we got police officers surrounded around the hotel right now, just so we know the score. As you can see, we got one cop truck over there. I feel like we in the Bronx, B. <laughs> We've got two cop cars over here. This is Mash Appeal at its worst. Now we're, we're going to go to another hotel that we have a relationship with. I've been kicked out of better places than this before. Yo, why is Miami a bunch of such assholes, Love is love. You show love, you get love. I had to hide drugs and the tapes in the spare tire of the car in the flap that's in the trunk. And I think Michael went to go and stash the tape somewhere because we have too many hours worth of footage and too many drugs to lose right now at this point. Yeah, so I don't know if that's true. We run <laughs> shit, though. Trying to get over to the... Hopefully everything's copacetic when we get there. Nothing but drama from day one. The police are telling you to leave the premises. You get on the phone and you will get a lawyer who will help you deal with it. They told us we had to be out in 20 minutes or we would be arrested. But it's not illegal for you to be in the lobby of the hotel. Yes, it is. It's their property. They said it'd be... What do they have to do to tell you you can't be in the lobby of a hotel? That's crazy. Yes, it's crazy. Uh, can you identify an aspect of this situation that's not? You know, they stole money from us, so we're not going to stand on a sidewalk because they decided to behave that way. I'll call them Monday morning to open the file, but I'm not sure why you're not flying home right now because we're not spending money on hotels for the next two days. No, we're not, but can we deal with this matter right now? We are looking at the partnership contract that we have with the hotel. All guests must present a credit card, a check-in to Whole Friends Incidentals. Okay, could you find the part that says if we don't deliver, 
then are they allowed to charge us for the rooms? Is there anything that says that in the no. contract? No. It is provided that this agreement may be terminated for any one or more of the above reasons by written notice, only for one party to the other. They're not going to be able to uphold the fact that they charge you pay for ten thousand dollars. You know what it might be? I went to the event. I left. I go back to the penthouse. I think I, it was probably like three o'clock in the morning. I was sleeping. Bang on the door. I'm like, fuck it. So I open the door, and it's Jason standing there with Nathan. So Scott, I know you have to leave soon. Um, can you just refresh my memory? Because was the concept that we were working with the fact that we only had one camera that any stuff that was pertinent to the story that was missing was animated? Is that right? You're. I can't hear you, buddy. I'm sorry. Got it. Yeah, oh, I didn't. Yeah, go ahead. There's noise going on earlier. Oh, that's okay. Um, yeah, that was the that was the conceit that anything you didn't get on film that we wished we had or tape in this case, uh, I would do the animation for. And strictly, I didn't know what else to do because I had done it for official rejection a year before. Um, mm -hmm. And I see it everywhere in documentaries now. I think we started a trend because it's I everywhere. see it too. I mean, you, you yeah. see Searching for Sugar Man did it. And That's I'm right. like, it looks like we run shit. And I'm yeah. seeing it everywhere. They're, everyone who doesn't have footage is putting animation in their documentaries. It's true. And we didn't, this was but like, you. well, you know, maybe we weren't the first, but it was like 10 years no. ago. So, you know, but nonetheless, um, you did such a good job <clears throat> all over the comments yesterday and today, <clears throat> excuse me, um, are people just marveling at the animation, which is, which is awesome. But I know you, I know that you're proud of this work and everything, but I know you well enough to know that you probably feel like your skills are so beyond what they were 10 years ago. Uh, well, I certainly can do better. Uh, it was just a time crunch, you know, because if you see a lot of it is still frames with dissolves in between to move things along yeah. um, because I can't do much better than, than was presented. We just didn't have enough time. And of course, none of us were getting paid. Uh, yeah. And I just, I, I just, it had to get done, even though there was going to be no money, there was going to be no, any kind of reward, but I knew we would be able to go some, somewhere with it, with uh, festivals and stuff. But uh, it was a fever dream. Like I just was just saying in the chat earlier, I don't remember doing half of this. And there was a shot, there's a shot of you reflected in the window of Dolce smoking a cigarette that I animated. I have no idea how I pulled that off. <laughs> because I'm looking at it, I'm like, I don't even know how to do that now. What was I doing? You know, so. Really? Yeah, oh, that's I, yeah. I can't think of, it's just you figure shit out when you present it with a problem and just say, okay, I know the solution is probably half-assed, but here goes. And you do it and I'm like, oh, it actually looks pretty good. And then you completely forgot how you did it. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's so funny because usually money is a big motivator. And w we not only didn't make any money, but all of us in one way or another lost money. Like I'm sure E-Class, <laughs> you lost money in Miami. There's no way that you walked out of Miami yeah. breaking even i don't think um i i was basically a homeless fucking you know transient at that point i didn't have anything um and just a little piece of advice for everybody if you want to make money in the film industry don't make documentaries unless your name is adam scorgy who's a yeah. great producer um but anyways uh yeah go ahead no it's the it's the love of the art and i was getting to know you guys through the footage and yeah, that's so weird. You guys had endeared yourselves to me, and I'm like, I gotta finish this. I, as someone, this story has to be seen, and these guys are awesome. Uh, I mean, you and I had our share of fights during the whole process, but that's true. me and anyone, uh, which is why I said yesterday, I wish I could be more like E class. I'll probably live longer and how to relax. But it's hard. Yeah, uh, it's hard for me. It's my personality. But uh, but yeah, I did it yeah, because you, I did, don't you call your independent company Cantankerous Productions or something like that? Cantankerous Pictures, yeah, because yeah. that's me. Uh, I'm yeah. easily riled, and I'm always up for a fight if someone deserves it, <laughs> which is why the friendship with the co-director on this movie ended, because he did unforgivable things. Yeah. Period. Plus, plus so. he wanted to write, like, weird dolphin imagery in the intro for some reason. I think he was... <laughs> on something most of the time that's all i can think of when i read when i think back of what i was reading i'm like he's got to be on something if he thinks this makes sense 
yeah. and I can't lie myself to it. So that's why I, I said, know. when you tried to pull out, I said, okay, I'm going to take all my editing and all my animation with me, start over. And that's when we you, what, was unfor- what was unfortunate, I, I, and I'll get back to the film in a second, but what was unfortunate about that, um, to be perfectly honest, sorry, Michael, but there was no way that should have been a co-direction credit. That, that was all you. Um, but he was the, there. He shot all that. He did make some pretty smart decisions uh, in what to cover and when, which gave me the ability to but, do what I did. Uh, so but isn't I, that a cinematographer's job? It is. It is. Uh, but I just knew it was never going to it was never going to go anywhere if we just didn't split the credit. So, yeah, I know. I know. And we even had to fight for that, if you recall. I, I do recall. I do. I recall a lot of fighting. E class, you yeah. got spared all of the fighting. Oh, no, I just avoided it. <laughs> Except for the one shouting match with you and Nick. Yeah. I was eating gum and I was chewing gum and smoking cigarettes, motherfucker. And you left the room. <laughs> That was funny. Uh, okay, okay, Scott, I know you're pressed for time. Hit me in the chat when you have like five minutes left. We'll come back, we'll chat it out, and then we'll go. I'll let you go, okay? Great, no worries. Glad to be here. Jason's like, where's Nico? I'm like, he's at the event. He's like, you have to tell him to get down here and get those speakers back into Penthouse B so we can have our party. I'm like, dude, those speakers belong to Brendan, the fucking guitar playing singer. He's like, I don't care. You tell Nico it's in his best interest. Okay, my boy? Jason has a key role in this whole situation. Jason and Nathan were running around the penthouse last night. They're like, dude, where's all that alcohol that you guys had? And I'm like, dude, it's all gone. They're rummaging around, asking me for our sponsor's booze, asking me for drugs. Drugs? People do drugs? I know. Oh my God. At WMC, people do drugs? <laughs> I bet you Nathan owns that hotel. That's why it's poorly run. That's why you can't get a signal on your cell phone in the first floor. That's why the internet sucks. Think about it. Jason and Nathan got together and decided that the contract was null and void. I bet you that money ended up in Nathan's pocket. If their stance is that you two are in violation of their contract, why are they taking money out of my account? Your name's not on the contract. I have to make it so that he'll take the charges off this card. But I love the karma. Karma's a motherfucker, man. Let me tell you. We run this! We run this shit! We, sometimes, we like to grab that shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm wrong with it, man, you know what I'm saying? Hey, yuck, yuck, yuck. who says brains fry your drugs, huh? You so, bitches so don't know this, Tell cut! Me. to have a sit down and just figure out how we can resolve this. We're gonna go and crash Eden Rock, which is the pool party that Nathan and Jason are having. This is the only way we seem to be able to track them down is to go to their actual event. We need to get that cash back that was stolen from us. They are probably there because it's supposed to go to midnight. It should work, it doesn't seem legal what they did. In the morning, they kick us out of the hotel. They have police in the lobby. But then they go and they charge his card for the whole thing. Retroactively. Retroactively. Yeah. So I told her, I'm like, we already delivered on 70% of the... You're agreement. giving me too much narrative. I don't want, no offense. Right now, I don't, I don't need your opinion. I need the facts. We were out for blood. It was a good thing that we had Michael Schatzer there. I can't really discuss the kind of work that he's done in the past. I'm not even sure if I have the right idea, but it's some pretty heavy stuff. So when we brought him in and told him what our situation was, he basically was like, you guys need to chill the fuck out for a second and think about this rationally. And and that's what we did. Did you talk to Yami about the $10,000 charge? No, she'll talk on corporate hours. Understandable. You know, the problem is there's always two sides of everybody's story and the truth somewhere in the middle. First of all, you don't throw people out unless someone did something violently wrong, which I don't, I haven't heard about, right? There were any moral violations or any, okay. Either Alan called Nathan and said, uh, I reversed the charges, go to the penthouse, or Nathan did it himself. Nathan was the one that made the decision on the card. It just leads to, like, very coincidentally, the son of the guy that apparently owns all these hotels bangs on the door and starts demanding shit right at the same time that a card was charged $10,000 for the, the stuff that we were supposed to get free contractually. So since Alan owns the series of hotels, I think Nathan owns this one. The timing on that night was just way too coincidental. God, guys.
means some things don't work out. So if they don't work out, you still uphold your end. You gotta understand who you're dealing with in the media machine they have. Be careful with those warts. I mean, the stuff that we've delivered on there already, I can go and invoice them. We got the photos, nice. we have photographers, we have video. You gotta be careful with that. You're threatening a person of substance. Okay. On shallow ground. On sh how's it on shallow ground? They can't go and completely breach the entire contract because celebrities didn't show up. Nathan's so disorganized at that hotel, and those guys are imbeciles at the desk, so they're just gonna print out what they have on the system. The less you say, the better. Say, oh, we forgot to get our invoices, exactly. and then shut up and let them print something right, and see what you have then. Hopefully their negligence will be our reward. Um, Scott, you have to run, eh? Yeah, I was supposed to pick up my son five minutes ago. It's up the street, but I got to run and do that. Okay. Um, we're going to be on for probably another 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, I'll try to come you... back. If, if Okay. Works, if so. you don't, farewell, brother. Thank you for making this movie. Um, Thank you appreciate for your letting son. me be a part of it. E-Class, it was good to see you. I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to chat. Love you, bro. Love you too, man. I'll see you later. Um, e, how are you for time? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I'm going to let this play till the end because it's getting to that point. There's like eight minutes left and then you and I will come back and we'll fucking, we'll answer some questions and then, uh, and then I'll let you go. Okay. Right now, honestly, I just, uh, my mind's in 9,000 different directions. This is like life changing decisions in the next two days. E-Class said that they're getting the information quite effortlessly between the three of them. If they get documents showing that we got the rooms comped, then legally they're not able to go and charge a credit card after the room's already been comped and we have receipts showing as such. So we're not at the finish line yet, but this is uh, getting better. My battery just died. In conclusion. I've got you and I've got on my other investor that really I need to get money to. My credibility is shot a lot right now. I don't know if I want this on film. My other investor, basically just someone that's not as savory as you'd like, he's coming back. He's now wanting his money. We were pretty much ready to kill people at that point. Not literally, but we were that angry. And Schetzer sort of provided this balance. We didn't get the results that we wanted, but things would have been a lot worse if he wasn't there to sort of rein us in a little bit. The one guy uh, with the dreads, the tall security guy, he was like taking pictures. He's like, can I get my picture taken with you? And I'm like, I'm like okay, I'm not a celebrity. He's like, yeah, we can put this together. And even though you guys didn't get to where you wanted to be, like we had a great time and you guys should know that you did a good job. And a lot of people are talking about Mash Appeal, even though a lot of people didn't go to Mash Appeal. Well, it looks like we got some good kind of exposure as far as the brand name. If we do Mash Appeal again next year, it's gonna have to be sponsored like 60 days or 90 days before I make a phone call to book anything. It's funny because I, I know that even a lot of my friends were kind of shaking their head, wondering how we could be involved in something that was so disastrous, but everything's cyclical. And we went back to our starting point. When we first threw events, it was for fun. And we did it for the people. It was, it was for the love of the music. And as corny as it sounds, I think those are the events that define you. And, and it's not the disasters. The disasters are these things that you gotta overcome. I would facilitate anything that could get all of my money back, not some of it, all of it. They're breaking the law by the way that they're moving forward with it. You have a better composure than I would have. I, I just don't know that anything is solved by snapping, which I'm real capable of. If this was just 15 years ago, these people would be on life support. I, I believe you, 100%. I don't know what the hell happened. It's just everything is going wrong, right? Wrong, things are not good. 
What's the game plan for how you're going to be able to pay my wife and family back? They have acknowledged that they took money out of my debit card just because they happen to have access to it. $9,000 charge that we were given from your company and I'm trying to figure out who to talk to because it seems like there's been a lot of dodging happening. We had a contract and there were several things that were supposed to be fulfilled and they weren't fulfilled. For some reason though, the credit card that was charged belonged to a cameraman that had nothing to do with the company. He was just part of our entourage. I'm sure that if another card was provided, that the charges would have went there. Or that card should have been provided at the time. You didn't actually go by the contract, you just sort of made it up as you went along. I would follow my due diligence and, and follow the law. You guys broke the law by charging a credit card that didn't have anything to do with Mad Flower. Mad Flower did not follow the contract. How about a little professional courtesy? Like, you didn't sit down and talk to us. It was very cloak and dagger. So, is that the way you guys do business? When you sit where we're sitting, it looked like a cash grab. And trying to get Nathan on the phone is like trying to teach your pet pig how to fly. Because he knows. So you're public relations, so I'm trying to relate with you right now. So you tell me what you think I should do. You're very funny, James. Thanks. Look, I don't have an answer for you. You think what you should do is send whoever you need to send, your lawyer, a collection agency, just invoice Madflyer Creative Group and reverse the charges on the guy who had nothing to do with the contract that Nico signed. I was the short, bald guy. Right. Right. There was no marketing done. There's a lot of talk and no action. What we didn't tell you at the time is that our initial $20,000 investor pulled the plug about two days before the Sunday event was scheduled to begin, so... I wish I knew. I mean, if you would have come to me and said, listen, this is the problem, what can you do? I would have said, you know what, here's 10000 let's do 50 at the door. We need to make money, and I didn't see you guys making any money. I don't shoot plants, I shoot... Well, I appreciate the candor, and uh, and I wish you well, hon. So thank you for no, thank you very much. I wish you guys luck. You're not bad guys. So all the best. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, now I feel bad for putting double horns on the guy in the in the in the video. I don't know what the hell we're. I, are we gonna edit that? No? Okay. <laughs> so in a few words, do you have any last thoughts on, on what you experienced? I have invested in no club events prior to Miami. I have invested in zero events since Miami uh, under advice of my uh, marital counsel. <laughs> they're, they're not good friends. <laughs> I don't know why that's in there. To be honest, I don't even know why she's in there at all in the whole back end, book end thing. But anyways. <clears throat> Comedy. It's also not true. <laughs> hey. That's true. Also true. And <laughs> quote. Well. Uh, not true. <laughs> it's...
Sheesh. Yeah. Oh, there's some uh, before. I I don't know why there was so much untrue stuff in, <laughs> in all those captions at the end. Maybe because it was, maybe it was true at the time. Um, the whole Alizé. Yeah, at the time it was. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of people E class that are saying in the comments, but also like months ago uh, when I when I put it on uh, YouTube. For, um, I put it on YouTube, but I didn't tell anyone, so I would just send it to individuals, and all of them came back and they were like, "This is like Fire Island light," but it's the same, and it's interesting because Fire Island was like a billion times more costly for the people that tried to throw that event but i think our editing like scott having scott on our team sort of like translating all that stress to the audience makes this film really stressful for people to watch like in the comments like you think it was stressful being there obviously but i, I think it's just a testament to scott's ability to edit and to animate because and and joe kramer i, I don't know if you know this e-class joe kramer who scored our film now does the Mission Impossible films as this as the music supervisor? Like he's like a top that. five music supervisor now, and so I think that we have a lot of like, and I know we do. We have a lot of thanks that that we should give to to Scott and to Joe specifically because of of how people are reacting to this film is probably because of them. I don't know. I mean, like you, yeah, dude. For me, it was single handedly because of Scott. If you ask me. Like, yeah. I mean, the idea was an idea, and then we had Mike out there and all that. I wasn't really, you know, wasn't really comfortable with anyone's editing skill, let alone ours, you know what I'm saying? So when Scott, you know, was approached and with the animation, like, and he yeah. did it like old school style. I think he was like scanning shit and then put, it was, it's it's crazy. He was, he did it all, it, and this is going to blow your mind. Like the Especially hardest way possible is the way Scott In did. Photoshop. <laughs> Yeah. He did it all in Photoshop, but he didn't use like the animating tools that Photoshop users use. He used the old school layering of all the animation. So everything, if it's a five minute shot of animation, that's probably a little long. If it's like a three minute shot, that took him like two weeks <laughs> because of the way he does it. And I couldn't believe it when he told me that. And I would talk to other animators and I'm like, this is how he does it. And they're just like, hold on, what? what yeah no nah, it's, really it's insane they, and it like is. honestly if it wasn't for scott's involvement i don't think we I, yeah the content was great but i personally was not going to sit in a room and try to edit that shit <laughs> i know james wasn't i'd still Neither be doing was nico it. you know so yeah exactly so for me i felt like yeah it's single-handedly because of scott's talent and skill and yeah you got, he's nasty with it He's yeah. nasty with it. And then with the young man that did the uh, score as well. We we yeah, just Joe got lucky. Kramer. We just yeah. we we just really got lucky. And the reality is being a young man from New York, we're not we showing our vulnerability in ourselves is not something we do, you know, fucking so that that whole process for us was it was what it was. And and honestly, looking back at it, like I'm super grateful for the experience. I got to meet fucking Mad Flower. I got to meet so many great people, you know. So for me, I don't really look at it about the money, you know. Even though they did take some money from me for my shit, we ended up getting it back, whatever. But it yeah. was a process, you know. Now um, you didn't just call me Mad Flower because no one calls me Mad Flower. I just wanted to. Well, you know, <laughs> I mean, that's from what I know. You as a madman that you are, and that was where the name was started from. Yeah, my last name is Flower in Italian. So, but, but please never call me that again, okay? <laughs> well, you, <laughs> you know what known the fuck that. it is, goddamn. Hey, look, it's Mad but, Flower. Um, hey. But yeah, man. Again, so so like, I don't really consider it uh, the fire situation. I mean, yeah, with with failures, I guess, but not necessarily because um, our intentions were different. This wasn't necessarily yeah. a, a a cash grab for us. This was just, I mean, for me personally, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to make so much. I just enjoyed putting situations together and putting people, you know, in position and making these connections. So for me, it was just, it, it, it was just, it, it was just working with my friends, 
you know, and then mm. if we were able to make a buck along the way, then hey, you know, Nico's intention, you know, was was totally different, you know, than mine, so to speak. Yeah. For me, it was just like, all right, I'm I'm gonna take some time off from being on set, from being a production assistant and learning how the film industry works and whatnot, and I'm gonna go go out and uh do this event that we just so happened to film that created this yeah i don't know e if you if you were aware or if you remember but we brought michael like this wasn't going to be a documentary when when michael landed michael was you know like he was there to document the event the event videographer yeah we were gonna try to sell shit to like you know digital outlets footage of paul oakenfold or footage of will i am or whatever and then when all this shit started to hit the fan i think it was right around the time when we um uh when we canceled the wednesday event and i was like looking around and i probably said something to you where i was just like we're fucked <laughs> like <laughs> we are completely fucked we, we are we are halfway through this week we've thrown two events they both crashed and burned and we have no money um it was it was beyond a, a clusterfuck, and then we were like, "Let's keep going." <laughs> what the fuck? It, but but then it's weird because it was like like the, the film starts by saying this film happened by accident, and I actually remember writing that and sending it to you, Scott, and being like, "I don't think that you could boil down that film to you could boil it down to two things. It happened by accident." in a sense, because it wasn't supposed to be a documentary film. When, when I realized that we were fucked, I, I, looked at, I looked at you and Michael, and I remember looking at Michael's eyes and being like, your job just totally changed. We are not, do-, and I'm not taking any credit in the sense that like, like you said, E-Class, when Scott was gone, Scott, you're the backbone of this film. You're the reason that this film is good, and all credit goes to you for that. Oh, yeah. But I remember and looking now. at Michael and just being like, your, 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 your job now is filming a documentary. This is no longer... Like, what are we going to do? Sell our failure footage to fucking TMZ? Like, wh- what are we going to do here? So uh, when I when I'm, I made that decision, um, I don't even know if I told Nick at the time, you know, that that's what's happening. I think like a half day went by and Nick was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, and then we were like, this is what we're doing now. Because th- I, you, I don't know if you've noticed, but the House of Cards has not only fallen, but they've blown away into the fucking ocean and we're fucked. Um, but, it, but then... But then I'm going to play this again, guys, because you guys weren't here. But then it all led to things like this. The song is O Sole Mio, and the little girl was my Aunt Louisa. Ah. And we can now sing that song. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, we failed and it led to that. And it's because of that man sitting right below his E class. Like the whole thing reads to me like therapy. Like it, it is, it, you look at the whole vehicle from, hey, James, you want, it? for me, anyways, it was like, I'm living in Toronto. I'm, I'm, I'm the guy on the couch at someone's house in Toronto. And Nick calls me, he's like, uh, you want to move to Los Angeles? And I'm like, yeah. And like 10 hours later, I was in Los Angeles living there, right? For, and, and that's how it started for me. And then it ends, not ends, but like, but here I am now, what, 10 years later. And 
you know, um, I, I'm on my podcast talking about this documentary and watching footage of Uncle Polly from Goodfellas on two bottles of red wine, Chianti, if I recall correctly, um, singing O Solomio in front of me like a foot away. And I hugged him when he was done. And I'm like, I'm hugging Uncle Polly from Goodfellas because we failed at something. And I would, that's what makes me so happy. Like the synchronicity yeah. in that is fucking ridiculous, you know? Well, as E Class would say, something good can always come out of that and something bad, you know? Look, no man fighting gold now. You can't taste the sweet without the sour. Right? Yeah. right so, right, this right. is like an old lesson for you. And I'm like this little grasshopper trying to catch up to your wisdom. Is that, is that what's happening here? Because I, th nothing like this has ever happened to me before. I, like, mm -hmm. really. Like, I've failed a lot and I've succeeded here and there. And. I, I know now what it's like to try to find silver linings in horrible situations. I kind of understand that. This was on another level. And maybe I'm thinking about it too hard, but it just, it was enormously designed. Do you know what happened when I went home? I went home, it was early 2009, and I called an ex-girlfriend of mine from like elementary school and somehow finagled living with her mom as her fucking butler. And I'm not even kidding. I didn't have to wear the uniform, but I cooked and cleaned for that lady for room and board because I had nothing. <laughs> because I was promised a 12 to 15 grand payoff by the time the week was over, right? And, and then I'm a butler, which is really ridiculous because I'm no. fucking messy as fuck. I don't know if you remember your class, but I'm not a very neat I person. can't talk to you right now. <laughs> Scott, we can hear you yell at your children. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I didn't expect to be try to be interrupted because I, I specifically asked not to be interrupted. But of course, Scott, you're nobody right. we're live, Scott. Scott, we're live. Yeah. I know we're live. <laughs> Cantankerous films, ladies and gentlemen. Pictures. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I, I um, have very little patience. E class, can you tell people what you do for a living now? Because I don't know if they'd be surprised or not, but like, you know. Uh, um, I'm still in film and television. Uh,. Assistant director mostly, but I produce, direct. Um, mostly been in the video world uh, for the most part, but it's it's been fun. I, I love what I do. I cannot complain. Um, been a part of a lot of big videos and and projects and whatnot. And now I'm in the development stages and looking to link different situations together. Sort of what I was doing with uh, with as our director of intangibles. Well, is like, is a director of intangibles with the urban influence. Yes, yes, yes. But yeah, um, by the but way, yeah. just in case you forget, E class, you're not black. You're Dominican. I just want no to black. Out. I'm Dominican. We're just niggas that can swim. I'm like Paul. I'm not allowed to say that word, but I'll take your word for it. Hey, I've, yeah, I've been called that, so I can I can say it. I'll, but, I'll um, fucking, but yeah. I'll fucking take care of that guy. <laughs> Whoever that guy is, they're called. Oh no, take care of him. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, for the most part, man, it's I, I've, I'm living in California, and just been just been shooting, just been shooting, jumping from set to set. We just shot something for uh, Tyler, the creator, yesterday. Um, we're doing something with Gwen next week. Gwen Stefani. Um, this other artist named Wizkid. So yeah, just been just been answering the call. Uh, the will you part, tell man. Gwen Desp Gwen Stefani that um, I had a picture of her in college, for no apparent reason, <laughs> in the bathroom on the wall facing the toilet. I just I I'm sure you're not, not the not, only guy yeah, that no, had no, a no. picture of Gwen. <laughs> you know what I did once? Yeah. The, um, remember Mickey and Mallory? What's that actress's name? Um. Uh, she was she was in uh, 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 Natural Born Killers, Juliette Lewis. Oh, okay. When I was in Calgary, like a year after that, I was I was doing interviews on the red carpet, and Juliette Lewis walked up, and I completely bullshitted her by telling her that I got suspended from my high school, um, like when I was in grade nine, because I was wearing an I Love Mallory Knox T-shirt. I just completely made it up out of thin air. Um. And then we were like besties for the rest of the night. So sometimes you can, <laughs> I don't know what, what my point is. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> other than, um, sometimes, yeah, you can make the bad thing.
by doing something intentionally and it will still lead to something good. Why am I telling that story? I did that though. <laughs> I, I totally bullshit her because I thought it would work and it did. I don't know. Does that make me a bad person, Scott? Not at all. You, it makes you a not, politician. Yeah. I'm you got to embrace all the Fuck you, E class. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. You fuck. No. <laughs> I'm just totally kidding. <laughs> um, I, Assistant directors, I just want to let you know. I don't know if you know, E-Class, what they say about hockey goalies and what they say about knuckleball pitchers specifically. How they're kind of like, they're, they're separate from the generalization of the athletes that play in their respective sports. They're special. They're touched in a sense. They're on a spectrum, but not the autistic, but just a special wavelength. Assistant directors are like that too. I don't know if you if you're aware of that or not, but every but I heard this from an assistant director named John Bronsky, who used to be a famous hip hop DJ in Toronto. And he's the one that told me that because I was like, John, you're such a weird character because he used to be like the top hip hop DJ in the country and quietly an AD during the day who hated the person that owned the production company that he worked for, which he also said was very common among ADs. E class, you don't have to say anything because I know you're working right now. Oh no, I don't work with people I don't fuck with. Like that's nah. It's funny. I, I've say, I've said no so many times to certain people just because you know I, I work. That's another thing. I I get to work where I want to work. You that's know, awesome. I I go where I'm wanted, not tolerated. You know, so it's 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 been a blessing. I cannot really complain. Like just last week was out in Detroit. Um, we did the SNL skid with uh, Eminem for Pete's last little thing, and we were actually scouting Eminem studio. End up, hey, we got to we got to shoot this real quick um, for Pete for SNL, and then it ended up airing on the the uh, thing. It was pressed for time, but it aired on YouTube, and I made a little I made a little cameo. You know, I'm incognito, but I'm there. You know, <laughs> and then I'm we to say that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm just not gonna. <laughs> We ended up uh, uh, shooting a video with him and Snoop, you know, like we actually went there to shoot that video. So that, you know, again, it's like a kid from the Bronx. I never expected this, you know, you know, I, to be I a don't part I, of this shit is. I, I first of all, I think that's amazing. I, and I'm not surprised at all that you're doing that with with those type of high profile artists. I. I don't know if you know, maybe you do. And I don't think you're the type of person to be like, yeah, I'm totally that. But you are extraordinarily likable. I don't know if you realize that. Why, like people, thank you. People say that. I, I have you. never met a person that hasn't said some variation of, I don't know what, like that E-class is a super amazing person. Like, like it's, it's everybody says the same thing. And that's, that's um, I know that you probably don't feel comfortable being told that necessarily, but like, it's good to know a person like that because sometimes, you, I don't know if you know this, but, yeah. but sometimes I, you come to my mind because I'm just like, you're like, cause I don't believe in God. You're sort of like, what would E class do? <laughs> <laughs> I should get a bracelet that says, what would E class do? Because you're, you're like the consummate calm guy who's like wicked smart and if it doesn't work out as an assistant director, you could totally become a ludicrous voice impersonator overnight. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we do voiceovers as well over here. Yes, yes. Yeah, Let yeah, me know what you need. Yeah. I do. I, I need but something. Not, but I thank you, man. That Again, that means the fucking world, man. Like, yeah. It's, it's hard work. And you can do it too, my friend. It's, it's exercise. <laughs> it's just basically, you know, I've... I've been through some things that, you know, figured out wasn't working for me. And then I started realizing what did, you know, and, you know, most of us become control freaks and try to control everything. And I just learned to, to go with the flow, so to speak, the old uh, Bruce Lee, you know, like water type thing. Water. There's a lot of shit that you, you like cannot water. change, but your own emotions and what, how you react to the situation. You know what I'm saying? So that whole experience with, we lost money. I've been there before. Fucking yeah. dealing with dickheads and jerks. I've been there before. So like the the only difference was that we were being filmed <laughs> dealing with assholes. Yeah. But That's you true. know, but for for me it was it was a great experience. You know, I I I mean I wasn't on the the, the it wasn't my neck on the line as much as it was Nick's. You know, and yours. You know, I I. I 
I was more of a emotional support and fucking, you know, there were a couple of situations Michael, dealing with, you know, what was that? Yeah. Well, Michael. Yeah. I mean, he, he lost, uh, he lost more than all of us combined. Yeah. At least. Well, yeah. I mean, he lost his, that, that week cost him his marriage. There's no doubt in my mind. It wasn't entirely that, but I it, was going to say, I don't big. know you, you know, what was going on. I think it added to it. It didn't help the situation. No, no. But they, there was trouble yeah. in paradise way before that. Okay. Yeah, but Mike. Well, then Mike, that's oh. good. We expedited a foregone conclusion. <laughs> I don't want to say that. I just don't want to bear the responsibility because those are two grown ass adults. I don't think us shooting the fucking film, you know, and, and I mean, Nick ended up giving him his money back, right? I never Some of it. About that, so. I, I, come no. on. No. I think I want to say yes. I know you do. That's why, Be that's why. Positive. You're a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> Think positive, oh, even if it means ignoring the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I'll oh. try, I'll try. But yeah, fucking Cali's great. Come and visit. Smoke some weed. Yeah, Scott's will. here. Scott, I are know. you still here? Yeah, I'm in Tarzana. See, you guys live in the same... You guys are so L.A. You still live in L.A.? Yeah, we would be... Ago. You worked... At, but wait, hold on a second. E-Class, didn't you live I in Sherman to, Oaks? I, no. But you have reconnected with with uh, Scott. I need to fucking bump into Scott. But you know, Scott be doing big things. Yeah, I know. I Scott, what are you doing right now? What are you doing right now, please? I sit here working out of my office every day. What you, specifically are you doing? Come on. I, need, I cut movie we trailers. Need, we need to repair. We need to repair the like ending captions that we saw in the okay. film now by saying true ones with the people that are right here. Yeah. I do motion picture marketing. The thing that I can be most famous for currently is I did a spot for Obi-Wan Kenobi, which is oh. out there, and they actually decided to re uh, release it as an official trailer. It's a recap of all three movies leading up to it. That dropped on the 26th. And I also did the trailer for Squid Game. Oh, which wow. No nobody knew was going to be a big hit when we were working on it. So, Oh, you I did the first one. There's the a page, second one, too. The page damn sure didn't reflect, I bet you. I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah no the the that's true it's true in any case but uh but yeah there's going to be a season two of squid game but the the first yeah. one was what i worked on yeah you have really cool stories it's such a unique position to be in to to like cut trailers for big films or quality films and like hidden gems and stuff too it's right? rare. like there's yeah um i'm proud of both of you guys i really am i think you guys are like Two of the what nicest of people you? that I put in my friend circle, and I know E class. I haven't seen you since uh, since New Jersey when you took me to a very scary house in the hood, and I'm like this kid from Canada. I'm just like, where are you taking me to? Like, where, where am I going? Door? And then when we went there, it was all the coolest fucking people ever, and I was just too high. That's all it was. Uh, <laughs> hey, unfortunately, that's what will happen if you hang with me. I love you it. Get man. too high. And, I met your mom and your sister and like all of the, all your whole family is cool. And you guys got that, like this, the same here, like here, you're all kind of the same. And it's almost like this, like your signature or something. You guys all look like you're definitely related is what I'm saying. You guys are all, <laughs> and you guys it, all look so young. I thought your mom was your sister. I really do. Nah, <laughs> I thought your sister that, was like your grandchild. I, was, I didn't know what was happening. Like, <laughs> you know, fucking jeans. God damn it. Nah, but I'm, I'm um, proud of you gentlemen as well, man. This this podcast thing, is, this is awesome. This is awesome. Thank hey, you. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, trying to build. Don't sell yourself short, James. You you brought yeah. uh, an incredible thing to people, and I can see they're all loving it. So, Well, listen, Um, and also just to let you two know, the 14 that you see isn't the number of people watching. We have lots of portals, okay? There's probably about 1,000 or something, which is Canadian um, for... I, decent listen it, it's all love for me i we didn't expect any of this from this documentary we fucking shot over 10 years ago you, you know, know what and thank everyone here watching thank you for taking the time to even give a shit about this something that we shot over 10 years yeah, ago i must say thank and you. having I'll tell you, if you want to know, <laughs> young, I, I, I was going to flower. <laughs> shut the fuck. Don't see, look at they're fucking saying it in the goddamn comments now, too. That's it. You know what? If I get if I if I blow up as mad flower, I ain't giving you shit. 
accept all the yeah. credit in the world and a we big fucking hug is your e class. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, no, but for real, like yesterday, I thought of this yesterday <laughs> or the day before, maybe the night before, where I was going to do this. St- no, it was yesterday morning. I was going to do star a Star Wars review for some stupid reason, um, and I couldn't find anyone that I wanted to do it with, and the people that I wanted to do it with weren't available. And I just literally was, went outside and was like, I'm going to do this. <laughs> and I just did it. Um, so part one yesterday, which I decided would be a two-parter like an hour before I went on air. This is beta testing for an idea that I have now, which is, I mean, Scott, this would be amazing because of uh, the apple tree, for example, where I screen independent films or short films once a month on my podcast and talk to the person who directed it or wrote it or whatever the fuck while it's playing or after if it's a short. I'll be happy to Um, do it if you want. Yeah. I, it's tough because I know we're going to get dinged on a copyright thing because of that fucking killer song when Michael was running around the club. And I found the emails where Michael is begging us to pay that guy money, which would have made him the only motherfucker that got paid for anything. So we were like, nah, <laughs> <laughs> he's going to have to do it for the love, motherfucker. You know? And then now uh, YouTube dings it with the copyright warning. So can't win them all, gentlemen, you know? <laughs> Uh, you mean, you mean they pulled it off? Um, I guess so. I, well, they got a copyright. And what happens is that if it makes any money, which it won't, um, it, it goes to them. That's oh. the, that they they have the choice whether or not they choose to mute it, which which is kind of a dick move, or let it play. And if it makes profits, then it goes to them. So. Okay. So hopefully it blows up so that they can get their money because I don't care. I, I in fact, want to go through the rest of my life knowing that I will never make a dime from this documentary. <laughs> we came close, though. Remember, we almost no. sold it. We almost it was errors it. and emissions, right? That's yeah, what well, I don't know right? why they, they, they pulled out. I honestly don't know. Why we couldn't get out. insurance. Huh? We, could, we failed the errors and emissions stage. Oh, we couldn't gotcha. get it. Gotcha. And gotcha. Uh, because... You know, of all the stuff that we did <laughs> right? and all the people that we talked about. But, um, yeah, it, you know, getting sued is almost a strategy for some people now. Like, I kind of love to get sued. It's publicity, you know, maybe gets your foot in the door. I don't know. Yeah. What is it? The cease and desist. Yeah, that's right. Gentlemen, thank you. Um, I'm going to I'm going to end it there. Uh, or at least I'm kicking your asses out now. Uh, um, okay. I love you both. I think you're both really fucking talented, amazing human beings. And uh, Same, likewise, yeah. likewise. Thank, thank you for having us. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right, um, guys. It's getting dark in here. <laughs> this is not intentional dim lighting. Also, my camera sucks, um, but that was fun. I, I had a I had a great time. I hope you guys liked the film. I hope it made you feel all stressed out. If you were stoned on Indica, I hope you're paranoid right now because that means that the film did its job. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> listen, uh, next time, uh, I, you know, we'll, we're, we're going to have like, I want to have the whole kind of team one day, but like in a year or something. But I definitely want to have E-Class back uh, and Scott back uh, individually or even together to talk about the new shit that they're doing because I think it's fascinating to talk to people who are, high level production teams working on the things that we end up consuming because it's special because you you know you can see sometimes you can see an e-class signature on it um and with scott because he's so independent and um you know singular obviously his signature as well his animation is dope so anyways i'm glad that i can introduce i could introduce you to them because they're two amazing people and uh i'm gonna end it like that tomorrow i'll be on the dean blundell show um Uh, for an election special and I will see you next time on Black Belt. Thank you very much. Black 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 Black